Introduction and Regulatory Framework of Export-Import We all know there is a lot of money in export business, but it has to be remembered that the same is the amount of risk involved and the expertise needed. In this lesson, we will discuss the issues right from need of export business to developing an export firm. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand need of export business, objective of export-import policy, export licensing, how to establish an export firm. The reasons for exporting involve the primary reason for export is to earn foreign exchange. The foreign exchange not only brings profit for the exporter but also improves the economic condition of the country. Companies that export their goods are believed to be more reliable than their counterpart domestic companies assuming that exporting company has survived the test in meeting international standards. Free exchange of ideas and cultural knowledge opens up immense business and trade opportunities for a company. As one starts visiting customers to sell one's goods, he has an opportunity to start exploring for newer customers, state-of-the-art machines and vendors in foreign lands. By exporting goods, an exporter also becomes safe from offset lack of demand for seasoned products. International trade keeps an exporter more competitive and less vulnerable to the market as the exporter may have a business boom in one sector while simultaneously witnessing a bust in a different sector. The foreign trade of a country consists of outward and inward movement of goods and services giving rise to inflow and outflow of foreign exchange. While the foreign trade of India is governed by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992 and the rules and order issued thereunder, the payments for export and import trade transaction in terms of foreign exchange are regulated under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. An overview of the four major acts governing the foreign trade helps in better understanding of the export-import policy of the country as also its operation requirements. Let us start with the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992 and the Foreign Trade Regulation Rules 1993 and the Foreign Trade Exemptions from Application of Rules in Certain Cases Order 1993 issued thereunder replaced the earlier legal regime consisting of the Imports and Exports Control Act 1947 and the Import Control Order 1955 and the Export Control Order 1988 issued thereunder and amended from time to time. With the operation of new legal regime, the era of foreign trade controls witnessed its demise. The primary objective of this Act is to provide for the development and regulation of foreign trade by facilitating imports into and augmenting exports from India and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Now let us proceed to the next Act, that is FEMA. FEMA has been brought to consolidate and amend the law relating to foreign exchange. The basic objective of this Act is to facilitate external trade and payments and to promote the orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in India. This Act deals with various regulations of foreign exchange like holding and transactions of foreign exchange, export of goods and services, realization and repatriation of foreign exchange, etc. The Consolidated and Self-Contained Customs Act 1962 came into operation on December 13, 1962, repealing the earlier three acts known as Sea Customs Act 1878, Land Customs Act 1924 and the Aircraft Act 1934. Each one of these was related to a particular mode of transportation. 
This comprehensive act provides the legal framework, guidelines and procedures related to all situations emerging from the export and import trade transactions. The primary objectives of this act are to regulate the genuine export and import trade transactions in keeping with the national economic policies and objectives, check smuggling, collect revenue, undertake functions on behalf of other agencies, and gather trade statistics. The Export Quality Control and Inspection Act was enacted in the year 1963 with a view to strengthening the export trade through quality control and pre-shipment inspection. The Act empowers the government not only to notify the commodities which may be subject to compulsory quality control and or inspection prior to export but also specify the type of quality control or inspection. The Act prohibits the export of substandard goods as well as the goods which do not fulfill the requirements as laid down under the there are two aspects of trade policy. The import policy which is concerned with regulation and management of imports and the export policy which is concerned with exports not only promotion but also regulation. The export-import policy of 2009-2014 aims at promoting exports and augmenting foreign exchange earnings. Regulating exports wherever it is necessary for the purposes of either avoiding competition among the Indian exporters or ensuring domestic availability of essential items of mass consumption at reasonable prices. By 2014, we expect to double India's exports of goods and services. The long-term policy objective for the government is to double India's share in global trade by, by 2020. All goods may be exported without any restriction except to the extent such exports are regulated by the negative list of exports. The negative lists consist of goods the import or export of which is prohibited, restricted, through licensing or otherwise or canalized. The negative list of exports is divided into three parts, namely prohibited items, restricted items and canalized items. Prohibited items cannot be exported or imported. These items include wildlife, exotic birds, wild flora, beef, human skeletons, tallow, fattened oils of any animal origin, excluding fish oil, wood and wood products in the form of logs, timber, stumps, roots, barks, chips, powder, flakes, dust, pulp and charcoal. Restricted items include any goods the export or import of which is restricted through licensing, may be exported or imported only in accordance with a license issued in this behalf. Canalized items include any goods the import or export of which is canalized, may be imported or exported by the canalizing agency specified in the negative lists. The Director General of Foreign Trade may, however, grant a license to any person to import or export any canalized goods. Establishment of an export firm is completed in two stages. Establishing a business firm, obtaining IEC, Importer Exporter Code Number, to start export business. You know very well what are the steps involved in the setting or establishment of any business organization. The main steps are selection of the name of the firm, approval of the name of the firm, selection of ownership of the firm, decide the location of the firm, developing trade name and logo of the firm, creating the necessary infrastructure for the firm, applying for the grant of permanent account number PAN for income tax, Opening current account with the bank. Now let us check our progress by finding out if the following statements are right or wrong. The first step in establishing a business firm is approval of the name of the firm. Right or wrong? Wrong. 
Restricted items cannot be exported or imported. Right or wrong? Wrong. The exim policy aims at promoting exports and augmenting foreign exchange earnings. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Exports and imports are made free except to the extent they are regulated by the provisions of the policy or any other law for the time being in force. Various provisions of exports like free exports, denomination of export contracts, realization of export proceeds, export of gifts, spares, passenger baggages, imported goods, replacement goods, repaired goods, private bonded warehouse and provisions of deemed exports have been included. The major provisions regarding imports include actual user condition, import of second-hand goods, gifts, import on export basis, re-import of goods repaired abroad, import of machinery and equipment used in projects abroad, sale on high seas, import under lease financing, exports promotion capital goods scheme and duty exemption scheme or remission scheme.